Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, we are talking about women and children who want to leave the home. Women and children who want to leave the home. There are agendas, as we speak, coming straight out of the United Nations, where there are goals to empower women and girls to achieve gender equality. It is hard to do that when you have a system, a society, a church even, and all these other organizations that support men who are controlling, power hungry, have their share of mental challenges. And yet some of what they're putting upon the family is overlooked, ignored. As long as he's there and he's working jobs or a job and paying the bills, you just put up with the yelling, the arguing, the name calling, you just put up with him pushing, shoving, slamming doors, throwing things. You just put up with him every now and again, hitting the kids, hitting you. I remember talking to my grandmother who was born in 1929. So you can only imagine what her life was like. (laughs) I mean, goodness gracious, you talk about disempowered. My God, back then, a man, he beat a woman and he beat the kids. And you were to go in that kitchen and cook and make sure that he had a hot meal on that table when he got home from work. You better make sure that house was clean from top to bottom and that you're dressed nice too. You know those old movies. For some older women, it's triggering those that are still above ground, it's triggering to see some of those old black and white movies. You see, yeah, the women were dolled up. They were pretty looking with their, you know, white aprons and so forth and makeup and hair done. Yeah, they were very pretty, but a lot of those movies don't show what happens when she burns something, when she failed to iron his shirts. What they don't show is when the children are crying way too much and he's trying to get his rest. What they don't show is when he has drank too much and what he's going to do in order to take control over his atmosphere because the neighbors are telling him, looks like things are out of control. You know, we're hearing too much noise over there. Uh, You know, you need to make sure that your animal isn't over here in our yard Well, I'm at work all day. That's her responsibility. She should be taking care of it. And so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to have to have, you know, a discussion with her. And that discussion, depending on what his state of mind might be like, might end in violence. Let me tell you something. Even though this was the kind of thing that my grandmother was exposed to and she shared bits and pieces while she was above ground. The thing about it is, is that it's still going on in some of these households. It's still going on. I told you all don't be deceived by those social media posts. I have even put on my own personal Facebook links to resources with regard to domestic violence. As old as we are, we still going through? Oh, some individuals, absolutely. Absolutely, laboring to love and abusive mates.blogspot.com because I know some people are still laboring. They can't just grab up everything and run out the door like the movie, like what somebody else did. Some of these people are in very complex situations where part of their mind is not even, Lord Jesus, with themselves. It's with the one who is abusing them. So yes, she wants to get ready to pack up her stuff, but her mindset is not ready to be free yet. This isn't something that we can do overnight. 
Let me tell you, this is one part of the message that when I thought about all the other messages that I did, I didn't give you the details in terms of how I got free. I gave you, you know, general information, but the details on how I got free, not the one that was abusive because of that detail was simply the police showed up. That's how I got free. <laughs> not, you know, there was really nothing else I could really say about that one. You know, family members helped me out uh, to get my stuff out of the house. Um, because he was going to be released from jail within so many hours. So I think we had, uh, I want to say something like about 11 hours. We had about 11 hours to get everything out before he was uh, released. Okay. So that in that situation, that's how that worked. Now, that one where I am married and we're not getting along. And he can attest to that. There was the arguing that had increased. And I'm not even going to, you know, go into that whole discussion of what was said and, you know, pointing the finger and all that. What I am going to get into is, well, how did you get free, Nicole? Exactly. And so I need somebody to take some notes. One particular individual reached out, told me about how she has stayed in the relationship and how she is still in this relationship. And of course, there are children involved. And then she finds out that he's got, uh, you know, some issues going on there mentally, you know, just a lot. And she's trying to do it all. OK, so this message is also for the one who's trying to do it all. But you need to redirect your focus if you plan on getting out of the relationship. OK. And yes, it is going to take some time. So be patient with yourself. Continue, you know, self-care, you know, peace, meditation, prayer, talking with the saints, going to, you know, the church when you can. Um, if that, you know, brings you peace, because I don't want anybody going somewhere that triggers them because sometimes the church wasn't <laughs> beneficial. I know in that relationship, you know, there were certain churches I stayed away from because I said, uh-uh, they're about the men, they're about sending you back to the abuser. No way. We'll just pray and we'll pray some more. Some people, they are marked. They're children of darkness. This is why you hear some of my messages where I talk about children of light, children of darkness. That is straight out of the Bible. And so a child of darkness who is marked as a child of darkness, if God is not releasing them, there is no amount of praying that is going to win them over. And so she wants to get free. She wants to get out. So one of the first things that I did when I was in the marriage, okay, was I had to look at my options. I started off with, since I had two young children, I did not want to do daycare, right? I wanted to allow some time to be with my children, you know, to cultivate, nourish, you know, nurture, do everything that a mother is supposed to do. So my focus was more mothering, less wife in the sense that I don't need to be sitting there doing a whole lot of communicating with him when I know that there is no room for communication. We're arguing. Remember I said we were doing a lot of arguing. So I've got to make sure that I get myself together so that these kids aren't being traumatized time and time again over the arguing that's going on, thinking that mom and dad is about to rip each other's head off. So less talking with him. And then I noticed that there was less arguing toward my exit. OK, now. The daycare situation was an issue because back in those days, the man was only making eight dollars and twenty five cents an hour. OK. We did get one of those apartments that didn't cost a whole lot of money. However, bills still needed to be paid. So if I want to nurture and, you know, do all these great things for the children and I know I can't afford daycare, what do you think I had to do? Get a source of income, right? A source of income that I could be able to be there for the children while I have my own income coming in, because initially he was taking care of everything, right? Women, we have babies. We want to stay with our babies. So there you go. Now you're relying on him. So I knew that in my mind, if you want to stop relying on him, 
for every itty bitty thing, you've got to have a financial resource. So I did like everybody else. You search on the internet, right? You're looking for opportunities. You're looking for part-time work. You know, you're looking for things where you can be at home with the kids during these days because I see that you're off on these particular days, okay? I looked at his hours, the hours that he was working and the hours that he wasn't working. And I strategically looked for uh, uh, jobs before, well, I'll talk about the other sources of income later, but I, I strategically looked for jobs based on when he wasn't working, okay? Because he's not working 24 hours a day. Come on. <laughs> okay. Well, I need my rest. I understand all of that, but uh, I also need to get my money and I am going to get my money. Now, you can't argue with a wall because I'm already got my clothes on. I'm good to go. You know, he barely got the sleep out of his ass and I'm already out the door. Okay. I'm already out the door. You need somebody to watch some kids or what have you. You can make those arrangements. See, now child care is in your hands if you if you know you cannot deal with, okay, this particular man, he was not physically abusive. So that's why I could do that. Now, for the woman who, oh, I'm so worried he might jump on the kids, he might do something to the kids and all that, then if that's the case, then you are going to have to look for the type of employment that you can be able to um, drop your kids off. Um, you know, within that same building that you work, there were many women that were looking for those types of jobs. Um, there were those uh, uh, various um, programs based on income where the uh, social worker, caseworker, will give you resources, which I did use at one point, um, will give you resources for home daycares because I didn't want the child care facility once I moved on. Um, in the relationship, I wanted that home daycare feel for them. Um, and then because of my income, I was able to uh, qualify so that uh, for the uh, child care, uh, you know, discounts, voucher program, things like that, so that, um, you know, they could be watched because I'm like, I got to work, you know, I mean, remember the man was only making eight twenty five an hour. And I knew that uh, at some point I was going to be on my own and I wasn't going to be able to pay the regular, you know, wages for daycare. So they've got those programs out there. But you get that information from social workers, caseworkers, you know, letting them know before things get bad, before somebody ends up getting hauled off to jail. You know what I mean? Like, listen, this is what we need to do um, because I don't trust, you know, this partner with my children and I want this, you know, resource and here's my income, you know, what I'm receiving and all of that. So when you're looking for jobs, you're strategically looking for jobs that are based on that time frame that you can be able to get out the house and work yourself. Or if you're going to work from home, making sure that uh, you can be able to do that but then also maintain um, whatever arrangement that you got with regards to the children. Because some people, God bless them, they got some in-laws, they've got, you know, relatives. Even if somebody can take, you know, the children once or twice a week, that's a cost savings for you. I was in a situation that was a bit more challenging. There were no people to drop children off with. OK, so that's why I mentioned about the daycare, the discount programs and all this other stuff. OK, so while I was looking for the job and also doing the research with regard to the uh, child care situation, I was also looking for ways that I could make uh, extra money with my neighbors. So I knew that there was a neighbor who she wanted her carpets shampooed. I had a carpet shampooer. I went on and I shampooed her carpets. Another neighbor heard that I was shampooing carpets. So then she was like, well, can you shampoo mine? <laughs> right. And so I charged them. Um, at that particular time, 
They knew that I was selling uh, goods on eBay because that was another resource for uh, monies. And so they said, well, can you take some of my items and put them up there? And I said, sure. Can I get X amount of dollars for these items that I'm putting up for you? Sure. And so I made money that way as well and then the traditional stuff like you know back in those days avon you know some of the cosmetic companies there were other ones too that were going uh, that were out there lingerie companies stuff like that um having um parties and attending meetings and selling things over the internet that i could sell where i could still make a profit that was what i was doing so various sources of income right trying to do what i could still had the kids though at that particular time okay so this is why you have to th think out the box if you're trying to keep your kids close but you still need the money because the whole point is what is the objective i've got to be independent i cannot rely on his monies okay the monies that he could be typically giving you, right? That allowance. And some women, you know what I'm talking about. That little allowance is not doing too much of anything, right? But what do you do? You end up taking money out of that to buy for the kids. It is not your money. You end up taking, you know, per se, you end up taking that money to fill up the refrigerator for things that the little grocery budget couldn't handle. And trust me, the grocery budget, you all would cry. You would cry because see, let me, let me explain something to you. When you are involved with somebody who is a tightwad, okay. And you're trying to make things happen it hurts it hurts because that individual they're going to keep pushing back on money 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 i don't have it well can you look for another job can you please look for another job you know that's going to pay more than what this job is paying you and he refused he refused okay Lord Jesus. So there were other things that I needed to research, of course, was, you know, I've got to cut costs even further when it comes to what's coming into this household as far as groceries go, household supplies. Do we need three different types of whatever? Do we need to buy this in bulk? Do we, okay, so who is charging less for this? So shopping around. I know that this store, Mm, is known for you know uh, having high prices and this store is known for having you know more sales and more discounts and so there was a lot of that that was going on and I know it's time consuming but once again what is the objective we are trying to be independent we are no longer relying on that man's money because at the end of the day it's not ours when you're dealing with controlling people it's his it's his. Okay. The other thing that I did was I did go to the church um, that I felt comfortable in that I knew was helping out the community. That's key. Not that church that most of the time you see the doors are closed through the week, right? Um, you never heard too much of anything in terms of what they're doing for the community, but you're looking for the churches that are doing something in the community. Why is that important? Because they know where the resources are for food because let's say that money is really bad, right? Okay, so they know where the food resources are and you can show up. Some of them do require, you know, proof of income. Some of them don't. And so they know where the food resources are. They may even be a hub for food. So that knocks that out right there. Okay, well, why are we getting these groceries? Where did these come from? I don't have the money. I'm sorry, I don't have the money to be buying groceries. So, um, you know, we're going to be doing a food bank. I don't want to do this and that. Oh, well, well, you're welcome to go to the store and you can get whatever you want to get. Okay. So the church, depending on, right, what type of church, if it's active in the community, they are going to have resources for not just food, but also some of them will have resources in terms of housing, or they're going to have somebody on staff that's answering that phone through the week who can help you out there. Um, you know, if, 
if you're trying to, whatever your goals are, I guess the key is, is that you need to list what you are trying to do. Okay. Because some people are all over the place. They want to be with the man. They want to, you know, be there for the kids. They want, you know, to be there for their ailing mother or father. You know, they want to be working. They want to do too many things all at once. And then when you're trying to do too many things all at once, you drive yourself mad. So we're doing things one at a time and we're breathing every step of the way because you don't want to mess around and end up having a health ailment behind all of the stress. So today the focus is on and then you fill in a blank. Tomorrow the focus is on and you fill in a blank. You see, the needs of the household are, those upcoming needs are important because Once you've outlined what those upcoming needs are, then you're better prepared for them and they're not going to be, you know, smack in your face. Like, for instance, he may see that all of this stuff is going on and now he wants to pull back from certain things and he doesn't want to do this and he doesn't want to do that. At that point, this is where now I got to leave. Okay, let's just say that now you got the job situation taken care of. You got the child care arrangement taken care of. You've cut back on expenses such as groceries and so forth, or you realize you income qualify for certain things as a family. Great. Now I've got to be zeroing in on this housing because he's going to make life very difficult because he sees that I am not playing. I'm not trying to stay with his behind. Okay. (laughs) And so this is what some of you all are at in terms of the relationship. I'm so over this. No, I'm not listening to nobody else about staying with him. There's a lot to unpack with him. He's not willing to unpack all of that. I'm not willing to keep riding with this man. Okay, great. Now housing with the jobs. When I'm going back to that for good reason. Let's say that you don't have any type of savings, no type of monies whatsoever. Okay, in terms of first month's rent, security deposit, all that good stuff. Now what? What I did was I strategically targeted jobs that I could be able to get housing, such as property management, leasing consultant, jobs that were willing to pay me to relocate, jobs that's willing to offer paid training, in another state, things like that. Okay. For some of you all, based on what your skill set is, and if you are degreed, you could be able to make something happen. You really could. You would just need, of course, to tweak your resume every time you apply for a position. That was definitely told to me. Like, you can't just have the same resume shopped around, honey, because you're not going to get very far. So, I did tweak my resume. Okay. When we were in and out, you know, back and forth and all this other stuff, one of the things that I had done was I had irons in the fire to move to San Diego. And folks are like, well, how did you pull that one off? What I did was I ended up putting my resume out to all of the organizations that were property management companies out there. And I tweaked my cover letter, of course for each need in addition to companies who they did not post any type of job whatsoever but I wanted them to have my resume on file so I tweaked my resume tweaked the cover letter put information out there but what I did was I told them that I was going to be out there in two weeks so this way they could put me on the schedule to interview me if they were interested and do you know that worked it worked. So if we're talking about an all out overhaul, get the heck out the state type of move, and you know, you got some money put away to make that happen, then we can revisit that whole job thing. And instead of looking at local jobs and, you know, based on his hours and all that, look, we just do an overhaul and just go ahead on and make this thing happen with the relocation. Okay. (laughs) You know, and so That was something that I did strategically targeting jobs that offer relocation, jobs that offered housing, jobs that offered paid training. Now, the jobs that offer paid training, they're beneficial because 
look, you're being trained on something new, something that you did not have experience in and you're being paid for it, which means that you can take that money and be able to put some money away for your future move. Hallelujah. All right. So checking those career boards, uh, shopping your network of uh, people who, oh yeah, you work for such and such. And then you send off an email to that person or you reach out via chat, messenger, what have you, look out for me. Remember I told you I had a lot of issues going on with, you know, cause some of these people you may have talked to about what your trouble is and now they're looking out for you. Okay. Okay. We want to make sure one of the things that I did in that relationship was once I had everything in place, job is in place, child care is in place. He's adjusted to the fact that I am out and about, and I've got my monies that I'm, you know, putting away. Now I'm looking at separation. What did I do with that? I looked at the, I looked at the separation part of it first because I said, well, is there the possibility that we could be able to work out some things? And so I started paying closer attention to the relationship and I brought up some issues, you know, sat back, watched, um, noticed, nope, no change, not interested in changing. I don't have, you know, the patience to deal with all that's going on in that mind of his. Um, so let's just go ahead on and make a divorce happen. What I did was I contacted a paralegal. Okay. Cheaper. The paralegal said that it's going to cost X amount of dollars to have me draft up the paperwork for you. Great. Okay. I also checked other places as well, right? About three, three to five, you know, just to make sure that I was getting a reasonable amount. I asked the lady because I did not have a driver's license at the time. Yeah, that was another challenge. <laughs> you see, oh, I had challenges. Didn't have any daycare around. Didn't, um, you know, the family members around. So no support system physically and didn't have a driver's license. Right. <laughs> it, had, it had been a long time since um, I drove and I couldn't even tell you anything at that particular time about, uh, you know, what's the N? What's the P? What's the D? <laughs> you know, so it, it it was that kind of thing, um, you know, that was going on. Um, so. We agreed to meet at the workplace. And for some of you all, it could be the library, it could be a local restaurant, what have you, to go over paperwork, what I wanted as I, you know, was leaving a relationship. What I did was I made it so that it was one of those agreements that he couldn't argue about and sold it to him on one of the best agreements that you'll ever get. You don't want anything. I don't want anything. Well, what about the children? Well, as you can see within the uh, document here, that's something that we will be working out between us. Now, for some of you all, ooh, that's dangerous because he could come back, he could sue. Oh, yeah, later on he did. He did. So for some of you all, yeah, you're welcome to spell out everything, but you're trying to get out the relationship sooner rather than later. And you're trying not to deal with the, all of the stresses and so forth. So I personally recommend one of those simple agreements where we're not doing a bunch of arguing and fussing and carrying on. And then we can always go back and talk with an attorney about one of those other type of agreements, you know that is going to ruffle somebody's feathers. But the key is, is that I'm trying to get out. And I knew that some of those resources out there, that if he was to up his income, they were going to talk about household income, right? <laughs> but this man isn't trying to do anything, you know, with his money, other than whatever he wants to do with his money, you see. And so I've got to do something that on paper, I can be able to qualify for certain things. And I'm not going to be able to qualify for certain things if, you know, we're factoring in everybody's income, you see. So there was a lot of reasons as to why, you know, I started down that pathway of, okay, 
do I, you know, want to go ahead and do this divorce right now? Or can I put this off later? Now, for some of you all, you got to know your situation. If you know that it's going to stir up, stir up a pot, people going to start freaking out. Oh my goodness, the paper. I mean, cause it, there is something to it. When you see a black and white document, you know, for somebody to sign, right? You know how you feel all sorts of anxiety and issues. And I need to sit down with this document for a while, or they might want to rip it up in front of you. Make sure you got plenty of copies, you know, whatever is going on with them. So if you don't want to deal with that, then you can always put that off for another time. Just get your body out of there. <laughs> get your body out of there as fast as possible. You know, if you're dealing with that sort of situation, but yeah, so there was that um, that uh, divorce uh, that uh, the paperwork had to be processed. So I paid for that. Um, before I presented paperwork, I made sure that all of my valuables was out of the house. Once again, we don't know what the mindset is like. And some people have the tendency to take things and destroy things and do all sorts of things with things, right? So anything that was a keepsake was already removed out of the, out of the house. And you're like, well, where did you store it? You can store that item. If it's a lot of stuff, which is definitely going to be like a red flag, um, you know, and if you know that he is physically violent and all of that, you don't want to be taking big furniture out the house and all that. If you, if you know that you still got to live there. So you take the small things, you know, the little things that are near and dear, your keepsake items, you know, the deceased relative that you love so much, making sure that that is taken out of the household, you know, and put in a safety uh, box at a bank, you know, or stored at a storage facility or, you know, uh, mail to mom or dad, you know, for them to hold it until you get back on your feet again. Okay photographs, stuff like that, videos, um, thumb drives, whatever, whatever's important to you. An old laptop that's got a lot of information on it. Um, so those things were removed prior to presenting that, uh, you know, the document, my address, my new address was already taken care of. Um, I did have to have the security deposit and the first month's rent right and they got this goofy admin fee as you know some of you all know about that back in the day we didn't have admin fees but you know oh we got to cover the charges for it. and then basically they're using that um in the apartment industry for marketing purposes and you know anything related to processing paperwork your background all of that so you're going to need it that's why i brought it up you're going to need that money if you plan on you know um getting an apartment and I got one of those apartments because I had two sons I got one of those apartments that was a um, a one bedroom that had a living room and the living room was the children's room so we had the two twin beds um, you know in that living room and um, I had uh, the back bedroom uh, to myself um, and then, you know, you could decorate it up however way you want. You can get a room divider. You can, you know, transform, you know, that atmosphere in such a way where it does not look like a living room. Okay. So these are things that once, you know, all the other stuff is taken care of and you're in your environment, you know, all the cool things you can do to just uplift your spirit, you know, just see the freedom. I guess that's what I really want to drive home is to see the freedom, to feel the safety, the comfort. Um, one while there, um, years ago, I found one of those apartment buildings where you have to have a code in order to let somebody in. And, um, you know, uh, it was one of those that I felt, you know, I felt at peace. Yes, you know, somebody could always hold the door open and come behind someone, but there were plenty of cameras, you see. Um, in that situation, in, in that relationship years ago, I ended up getting a restraining order. So that's why security was a big deal for me. Um, but um, in this particular relation, relationship, um, when I did present him with the papers, he was pretty much done and, and ready to go. It, you know, it's all over. You know, I, I'm, I'm done arguing with, with you and all of that. That's why it's so important to stop the arguing. 
you see, to stop all the talking, because then that way that person can process the fact that this relationship is burning right now. It's over. But if I keep fighting with you, I'm also sending you a message that I still want, want you, that I still want whatever we once had. And that sends a message to that person. Well, then you still want me. And even though maybe that's not what you're doing, but if you're, if you keep fighting like that, Hey, that's what they're seeing. All right. So all of these things that I talked to you about, I hope some of you all have put together notes. Okay. Because this is, this message is designed to get you to get that plan together. If you've had enough. Okay. Too often, women and girls have been disempowered in so many different ways. They've been told that you don't know what you're doing. You don't make enough money. You're never going to be good at, you know, some of you all have heard so many different things said, and this is why it is hard for you to let go of this person who once esteemed you and had all these nice and wonderful things to say about you because you're holding on to what once was. But now that they have said so many evil things to you or behind your back, they have disempowered you. They have not uplifted your self-esteem, your self-worth, right? But then we shouldn't have been looking for somebody to do that for us. That's where we went wrong. We should have been alone long enough to focus in on self-care and self-love and all things related to self as God leads. We're not talking about man-made or woman-made type of selfishness, but we're talking about the type of uplift to oneself that comes from the one true God through spirit and through truth. And the truth is, is that too many women and girls have been abandoned by their fathers emotionally and or physically. And let's not even get into spiritual, right? But if there is none of this that's going on inside of the family construct growing up, then it isn't any wonder why she gravitated to this man who's, who's supposed to be all things to her. I mean, I was a mere 20, oh my goodness, I was a mere 22, 22 when I met the man that I eventually ended up uh, divorcing, okay? 22 years old, he was 31 at the time. Some folks are like, well, what was going on through your mind? What was going on through my mind was, was that I just wanted somebody who was safe, right? Secure. Somebody who wasn't all over the place. So I thought somebody who was just a mature person who seemed like he had his head on straight and wanted a partner who he could just work with and we could go places and do cool things and and we did and then children were born <clears throat> you see and there was the distraction there and then I wasn't able to see everything because I'm so busy focused on children and then when that died down a little bit I was like this isn't what I want you see, what do we do? We grow up. We start realizing that what we could tolerate back in our early 20s is not what we're going to tolerate in our 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, okay? <laughs> you see, and for some of you all, you have come to a place where I'm not mad at you that you don't want to be in this relationship because your body is changing for some of you all. I know I'm in my forties. Okay. So I'm just like, listen here, <laughs> I'm going through something in my mind, body, and spirit in my current marriage. And it's a fight. It's a fight to not want to just go off and do my own thing. 
This is what some of the men who were going through midlife crisis back when I was in my 20s and they were seeking me out. That's what they were going through. And some of them are still going through it. You look around and you realize, is this really what I want to do with the rest of my life is spend it with this person? Is this what I really want to do, you know, is be all things to everyone in this city, state, town, borough that my parents and my grandparents told me that you're never to leave and you're to be here for us, you see? And so I want some women and girls to get to a place where they go, I love me without feeling ashamed or without feeling like it's that kind of lover of self that the Bible warns us about. No, I'm loving the Lord and the Lord has downloaded his love within me that has caused me to love myself, love myself enough to stand up for myself, love myself enough to create a plan to get myself out of the mess that I caused where God was never involved to begin with. Love myself enough to be that parent that I want my child to look at me and go, wow, you know, I want to be just like you instead of, no, I don't want to be like you. You sitting up here and you serving and him, you know, and you got a frown on your face and he's being disrespectful, calling you names. And, you know, he's being difficult and you're being difficult right along with him. You're picking up on his evil ways and, you know, you mad at us and you taking it out on us. I don't want to be like you. I don't even want to have any kids. I mean, is this what is this what this is about? I mean, do you want your little girl? You know, some of you all, you got daughters. You want your little girl to grow up and and be like you. This is why some mothers are very adamant about, girl, put off all of that boyfriend and husband stuff. Put, well, why mom's so upset about that? Every time I bring up a boyfriend or something, because she don't want you to be taken advantage of and she probably sees weaknesses in you that she had at your age. That's why. That's why. I mean, every time I bring up something, she start freaking out about it. Yeah, because she knows that you're not ready. My mother, she saw some things about me a long time ago. And she said, "Mm mm-hmm, this girl, she going to end up doing the same foolishness that I did. And didn't I? And she was so angry, so angry about it. But then you got to be that example. Come on now. You got to be that example that if you're not being controlled and you're not being that one that is relying on him, dependent on him, the sun in the set. The sun uh, rises and sets because of him. (laughs) I mean, if you're not being any of those things, then yes, then I mean, I could see where I would be different. But she was being some things that even her own mother warned her about. And that's why the man got the upper hand. And before long, it's like, mom, what do you want to do with your life? What what do you mean? And then the next thing you know, she started talking about him and what he liked and what he wanted. And I started getting upset because as I was mature and I'm saying, this isn't, this isn't what God called for my mother. She did not call this man to be a God in her life. And I don't care how many years and yeah, God bless them that they've been married all this time. But come on now, this man has become a God in her life. And that's not where God wants us to put a man. And this is why for some of you all, you end up feeling so downtrodden about some things because you know what you did you move God out the way a long time ago and you put that man there because why you can kiss that man you can hug that man you know that man can hug you 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 can be in a bed with that man that's what it was all about for you it was a physical thing you see it was natural it was worldly and then God shows up in our lives and he says You know, I can take that man away from you, right? You know that I've never called you to be in that relationship with that man. There was another man. Matter of fact, there is, there is a man and I see him in the spirit floating around long time ago. We should have been connected, but never did. You know why? Because we both did things that we didn't have no business doing. We'll probably meet in heaven. (laughs) And the same thing holds true for, you know, the, the, the partners that we get ourselves involved with. They did the same thing. Whoever God had chose for them, they will not meet in this lifetime. Isn't that a hard truth? But some of you all though, here's the positive (laughs) for some of you all, you still got a chance. 
you still got a chance to meet that person. And so I see that in the spirit for some of you all. And I'm excited for you. You still got that chance to meet someone who, yes, yes, where were you years ago? But hey, we found each other now. Hallelujah. And so let's start by getting out of the life of someone who God never called you to. (laughs) Who did not want this for you. Yes, you're still going to be tied, right? Because I was, you know, even to this day, I'm still tied to two of the four, the father. And guess what? We're not arguing. We're not having attitudes. We're not mean spirited toward one another. We have a friendly relationship. But it's out of distance. It's out of safe distance. And the children are now grown. And uh, they have their share of stories. And they've got their things that they are working through. But praise be to the one true God. Everybody saved, sanctified, Holy Spirit filled with the exception of a couple in the family. Don't want to get into that because God is still working on them. Um, But as far as all of my sons go, they are all saved, sanctified, Holy Spirit filled. They went through the fire and they came out not burned. And so as we're preparing for the future. Whatever that future is that God has called you to, always keep him in the forefront. Don't put your children above God, you know, by living vicariously, by changing, you know, the compass, if you will, of where God is taking you. If God is taking you north, then north it is. The kids may say south, they may say east, they may say west. Uh Uh-uh, we're going where God tells us. Now, if you want to go east, west, north, south, or or south, or wherever else you want to go in the future, that's on you. But for now, God is pointing us toward the north. Well, I don't like this and that. Once again, when you get older, you see, and for some of you all, there's going to be those that are going to push back. They're going to have an attitude because you're about to make a major transition in your life. And it starts with these baby steps that we talked about early on, right? From making arrangements with regard to the child care to where's my money coming from? And, you know, the whole process of being independent and moving on. And if you got to get a restraining order, then you do what you have to do. If you got to change your name, um, some folks, they have even researched various ways in terms of disappearing, if you will. Okay. There are various um, systems out there similar to what the witness protection programs offer uh, for women to disappear so that they're not found. Okay. By their abusers that their children are safe. And if your situation is that bad, then that's what you'll have to do. And the Google is there for all of this, for everything you need. All you have to do is just include your city, state. All you have to do is just put in the various uh, jobs and so forth that you're interested in. And yes, I know I make it sound easy. All I, all, she, all I have to do. Yeah, well, It's better that we make it sound easy than make it sound difficult and then you don't do anything, right? (laughs) But I want some people free in Jesus' name. It's been too long. You've been listening for too long not to be free, okay? But pray about this. Once again, as I've said in other audio, pray to make sure that God has called you to freedom, separation and or divorce, right? Make sure that he has done that. Don't just up and just do things. And then the next thing you know, that man gets saved, sanctified, Holy Spirit filled. And then, you know, but I know for some of you all, that's not happening for me. As much as the church was telling me, oh, you know, stick it out and all that. It didn't happen. It did not happen. I had notes upon notes upon notes. And the Lord simply told me it was not going to happen in my lifetime. And for some of you all, that is heartbreaking. But you want your freedom, don't you? Okay. So I know you would love for him to be all cleaned up for you because you're the one who put in all of the work. You're the one that put up with all of his mess. And you heard about those marriages out there 30, 40, 50 plus years. And you put up or she put up with all of that. And you want that to happen for you. But it's just not it's just not happening because you don't have the type of mindset that some of those women back in the day had. We live in a different society. 
That's the problem right there. You see, some of those women, they could put up with all of that because the society at which they lived was very supportive of the nuclear family. Okay, so they kept out a lot of the distraction, a lot of the obstacles. Okay, there wasn't a pressing issue for women to work like it is now. You see, things weren't as expensive as they are now. You know, so, hey, happy wife, happy life type of thing was going on for some of these women. Not everybody was abused. There are those stories. Some women were cared for, you know, and loved a lot. Matter of fact, sometimes they were abusive toward their partner. Okay. But then things changed. And then once again, you got to look at how your relationship was set up because there are those modern day relationships that look like those older relationships filled with love and romance and all that other stuff. But then they have their bad days too. But people agreed on having certain types of relationships like the man who says uh we're not doing divorce right and he's not giving her any reason to divorce she might be going through some issues because of whatever her father and mother put her through but he shows himself to be a strong righteous loving type of man and there's not a whole lot of them out there. And many of them are already married. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, even when you get free, now what? Now that you've done everything, you don't go looking for a man. Once again, you focus on self-care, self-love, unpacking all of the issues, why you got yourself involved in that relationship to begin with. Even if the men are looking at you now that you're all dolled up, looking good, feeling good about yourself, got your place. Okay, taking care of business concerning your children and all that. That's where the focus is. Because I got children who they told me they said that they were upset about some things that they noticed years ago where distractions showed up. Okay, they didn't like the fact that folks was distracted. And uh, yeah, so kids pay attention and they will wash your face with it later on. You were with who, you were dating who, you were, you know, married to who, you did this, you did that. Oh, they're going to start pointing a finger. That's why I say, if you got kids, focus on your children, you know. Well, I got my knees. Yeah, well, you're going to have to put your knees off for a while. You owe that to your children, okay? You really do. You really do. You owe that to your children to be there for them, especially when they're really young. And oftentimes... And I've heard from singles, they really don't want to be bothered with your children, that other man's children. They really don't because they want to really, their ideal partner is really someone who does not have kids if they don't have kids. Now, if they already have kids, that's fine. But then they want to make sure that you got your head together concerning your kids and that you, not everything is revolving around your kids. And a lot of times there are a lot of things that are revolving around children, especially special needs. And one of my children, they were special needs and still has their share of challenges. And so, you know, uh-uh, uh-uh, we can't be putting people in front of uh, our children and uh, they just don't have the patience, the love or anything else, you know, concerning special needs. Okay. And um, God wouldn't be pleased if you once again got partnered up with someone who is giving you the blues. So that's why we trust in him for partners. We don't trust in men and women. We don't trust in, you know, some psychic out there. We trust in God. Get into your word. There's a lot to unpack even in the word with regard to getting free and moving on. I thank those of you all who have reached out over the years and updated me on what's been going on. Okay. I hope that this message 
has been jam packed with plenty of information to get you going, to get you motivated. I want to take a moment to pray. I'm praying in Jesus mighty name for the listener who is motivated to finally do some things that are going to usher her and her family forward. I'm praying in Jesus name, Lord, that you will give her all of the wisdom, the insight, the motivation, the resources that she needs in order to meet her needs where she is from housing to child care to all of the things that she has gone to you about. I'm also praying in Jesus name for the children, the children who didn't ask to be here, but they're here and they need assistance. And I'm asking Lord that you direct her to resources with regard to that as well. Cover this family in Jesus name from the plans of the enemy to kill, to steal, to destroy. Cover this family from all of the things, Lord Jesus, that you have spoken to them about privately, publicly, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We need safety. I'm seeing safety in the spiritual realm for someone. And I'm asking, Lord, that you will move on this person to seek out domestic violence resources because pride is getting in the way of this woman getting the help that she needs. I'm also seeing in the spiritual realm, Lord Jesus, thank you for this. I'm seeing where a child, Lord Jesus, is very happy and excited and just rambunctious. But the mother is inundated with all of the responsibilities and caring for this child. We're asking in Jesus name, Lord, that you direct her steps toward resources at the local hospital that can help her out concerning this child, Lord Jesus. I'm also asking, Lord, that you be with those individuals who are short on finances, Lord, Lots of individuals short on finances that you will bless them with the concepts, with the ideas, with the instruction, and even those who owe them money, Lord Jesus, move on their spirit to give to them, Lord. And offer services as well, Lord. There are family members that they have that could offer their service and move on their hearts, Lord Jesus, to pick up the phone, to send an email, to reach out via social media to these people in need who need them to watch children, to run errands in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I'm also seeing in the spiritual realm where people can save money. They can save money by using coupons. They can save money, Lord Jesus. They can save money by cutting back on some investments, seeking out financial planners, which it's been a while for some individuals. And you're doing better than me, some of you all. <laughs> you're doing a lot better than me. The fact that you have financial planners, you have a 401k, you have an IRA, you have a number of investments. So what is happening, though, for some individuals is that you have an immediate need right now. And I know that you don't want to have to go into certain, you know, monies, but you're dealing with abuse. OK, you're dealing with abuse. And so. If you trust God, you know that God will bless you with the monies to pay yourself back. But you've got to do what you need to do to get free. And so some people, they are blocking freedom because they don't want to touch monies. Lord Jesus. They don't want to touch monies. And so because of this sort of thing, this is why they're staying in the messed up relationships. Because they're tightwads. That's what it boils down to. So I need some people to come out of pocket and do what needs to be done to set yourself free. I'm seeing it in the spiritual realm. The money, I'm seeing these dollar bills that are surrounding some individuals like a fence. Right? But it's circular and the people are inside of it. And it says if the money is holding them captive. I'm also seeing where some individuals, it's lack, it's lack that's setting you back. But the Lord says that 
Just as he can supply for the birds, he can also supply for you if you trust in him. What's happening is some people are prematurely doing some things and getting themselves into a lot of debt. Okay, but what kind of debt are you getting yourself into? Is it debt that is setting you free or is it debt that's keeping you there in the relationship? And that was one of the issues that I ran into. I don't want people doing what I did years ago. Okay, you stay in that relationship, a relationship that you don't want to be in. And meanwhile, you're pulling out all sorts of, of uh, credit cards and so forth. As soon as I got my debt taken care of when I was in that relationship, that opened up the door for me to be able to get the resources that I needed to leave. And it was all cash. OK. You got to be determined. Come hell or high water. And no, I did not celebrate holidays. The kids could go without. OK. Those holidays are not important. What's important is we need to leave. That's what's important. We can catch up with birthdays later. We can catch up with, you know, all of these other things that are out here. But we need to leave, okay? Mommy says that we need to leave, okay? We're going to leave. Am I going to see daddy? Absolutely, you're going to see your dad. But right now, we need to leave. <laughs> and so get in the car, you know. And like I said, I didn't have a driver's license. So, <laughs> you know, you got to rely on other people. Lord Jesus. Nowadays, you got Uber and Lyft. Back in those days, we didn't have that. Out there in Pittsburgh, we called them jitneys. Okay. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful. To, for the one true God, I'm just sitting back in the spiritual realm just to see if there's anything more that I need to share before we wrap up this message. The marriage, though, someone I'm hearing in the spiritual realm is talking about, can we go back to marriage? The scriptures have already been given with regard to that. So you'll have to listen to an earlier message that I did. So I won't be getting back into those scriptures about marriage and divorce and all of that. I want, though, for you in the spiritual realm who is reaching out about marriage, I need for you to do what you can in the quiet of the day when things are still, when they're peaceful, to ask God questions. The first question is, have you called me to leave this relationship? You're not going to get the, you're not going to get the answer right away. Instead, you're going to hear yourself start running your mouth. <laughs> okay. So allow the Lord to give you the information. Number two is when should I start making the effort to leave the relationship? If he has told you that you might have to sit on that first question for days, weeks, months before you get an answer. You know, so you can write it, fold it up, put it in, you know, the Bible, these questions. And then three, what is the plan? What is the plan and how to get out of this marriage? And then, of course, you've already got some notes, so you got a head start. But now you're going to need locations and you're going to need to know how much things cost and all that. And that comes with boots on the ground. You got to get in a car if you got a car, you know, you've got to, you've got to, uh, get on the phone. You've got to send out some emails. Okay. So get ready to do your work when the time comes. But, uh, the marriage itself and all of the lovely things that holidays like Valentine's day bring about sentimental temporary and then we're back to arguing again we're back to having attitudes we're back to the same old same old i mean if you want to keep going around and around the mulberry bush you know <laughs> running on a gerbil wheel you're welcome to do that uh but some individuals it was a grind to get to 40 plus years they don't tell you about the times that they cried and cried and cried some more they didn't tell you about the times where, yeah, I still had to go through 
you know, I still had to go through my share of upsetting moments because I still loved them. And I didn't want to deal with the pain. You see, when you're still going through that, that's not a good time to just up and leave unless, of course, there's physical abuse involved. Because what are you going to end up doing? You're going to end up going into your new location and then he's going to want to come over and then you're going to be back to being in the bed with him. And then you're going to try to rekindle a romance and then he's going to get all set in his ways again. And it's going to be back to the same old foolishness and the arguing. What I didn't say in the beginning part of this message before I close is that it was at least seven to ten times in an eight year period that I was back and forth in that relationship a few of those times it was just a short stint it was going over to mommy's house and mommy's like "Uh uh-huh that baby crying and everything else you can go (laughs) you see then there was the moments of i'm just going to shut down within the house so it's a separation of sorts where i'm not doing anything for you we're just roommates Then there were those times of I'm just going to get the job and busy myself so much. In fact, that I don't have to look at you, talk to you or anything else. And then when it got to a point where now financial stability and emotional stability and everything is looking good and feeling good on the inside. Now I'm going to leave. And when I left, I left for good that time. Now, when I left, though, there was one moment of weakness where I don't want the kids to see us together, but I do have my needs. And I went on and I did that and I felt bad about it. I let myself down. I never did it again after that. So will you have those weak moments? You just might. How do you prevent them? You don't open up the door. See, I opened up the door. The person standing there, I opened up the door, literally opened up the door, opened up the bedroom door you know, and then felt bad about it because I had promised myself that we weren't going to do this thing again. And so I said, that's okay. I fell down in that moment, but I'm not going to stay down. I got back up and I said, you know, to him, this is it. And I meant it. And even when there was a, you know, a little reminiscing about good old days, uh, uh, nope, can't come back. All right. So for some of you all, you got a habit of doing that sort of thing. You got to stop it right now. While you're still in that relationship, while you're still in that household, no amount of sentiment. I mean, if you got to snap a picture of him looking as ugly as ugly can be to keep you motivated once you get out that house, that's what you do. <laughs> If you got to carry us some stinky foul sock in a plastic bag (laughs) and periodically sniff that stinky sock to motivate you to keep from going back, then that's what you do. I know it sounds weird, but people got their ways of staying motivated, okay, to (laughs) keep from going back. I didn't do that, but what kept me motivated was there was a way that he talked that was annoying sometimes. And so when I would hear it, that was like, ding, ding, ding. Okay, no. (laughs) Okay, got to go. Bye. No, but mm -mm, bye. (laughs) See, so for me, it was just this little annoying thing that every now and again would show up in his voice. And I was just like, yeah, that is not sexy. (laughs) So whatever it takes, I just want some folks to stay strong through it all and I'm sure you will this message was pretty heavy might have you know triggered some you know sad emotions and so that's why you know I ended it on a lighter note I thank you as always for taking time out to listen you've been listening to YouTube in Enterprise 7 feel free to like subscribe comment we do welcome giving on this channel and thank you